The Secret Agenda in Antarctica. What was the real reason, the main purpose of many of these global leaders visit to the mysterious icy planet? This is a white paper that is available to the public describing how several teams compiled enough information to show there's a very good chance a region in West Antarctica could have an additional 91 volcanoes that we didn't know about previously. Now think about that for a minute. 91 new volcanoes discovered. And then what about all of this talk showing there is not only in nor on the North Pole, but also the South Pole, so Antarctica and Greenland, these massive ice sheets are melting from the inside, internally. There's an article BBC yesterday that I read about how ice sheets in Antarctica are, me are meeting the ocean. So here you, know, here you can read about it, popular science, Newsweek, Antarctica is leaking from the inside out, puzzling heat from deep inside the earth as melting Greenland's ice sheets. Are Antarctica's ice sheets near a climate tipping point? Inside climatenews.org. Well, let's go back to this white paper right here. And if some of these volcanoes are active, and these volcanoes are big. Some of them are over 11,000 feet. I mean, have you ever done hiking in Idaho, Colorado, Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, Washington State, Oregon, 11,000-foot peaks, that's a good-sized mountain. Now, if you're going overseas, if you're going to go do Mount Everest, you know, 27,000 feet, I get it. That's a whole other ball game. But also, the elevation out there is quite a bit higher. Now, if you go to Alaska, I think Mount Denali is about 20,000 feet. But the amazing thing about Denali is where it starts, the elevation, its starting point. Kind of like if you decide to hike Mount Rainier, you know, it's over 14,400 feet to the peak, to the summit. But it starts out in an elevation that is relatively low compared to certain places that might have a peak of 15,000 feet, 20,000 feet overseas. Well, where is it starting? What's the elevation? But anyway, that's a whole other podcast. Now, I want to show you here specifically this information. And I'll leave the link in the video description box for this. This is showing the West Antarctic Rift System. You can see right here. And then these red spots showing new activity, volcanic activity. They're comparing this to an area in Africa that has a vast network of volcanoes. You scroll down here. This is where it gets interesting. It shows the measurements and stuff. Now, right here, let me see if I can... There we go. Okay. So the different colors that you see here put into perspective the confidence factor. So if it's a four and a half out of five scale, that's that they're pretty darn confident that that is a volcano. And this is showing you know, the coastline. It's showing the rift system. It's showing the Ross Ice Shelf. You can see specifically the areas that they have discovered these volcanoes or what they feel as volcanoes. And, and the, th the reason this is so important is I think there's already a lot of activity going on out there that we don't know about. And they're discovering civilizations, they're discovering foliage and plant life and possibly ancient technologies that are far beyond even today's black ops type stuff that you just hear about in the TV shows and movies when it's sensationalized. They're probably uncovering stuff out there, archaeological finds, etc., that would just rewrite history as we know it. So they're attempting to clean it up, sanitize it, take as much of it as possible, and they're probably preparing for what happens when the ice does melt. 
Now, let's say that the powers that be find a way to offset this pole shift, like has happened in the past. Like I've shared with you this information with these essays that used to be classified that are now available, you can read about, that describe previous cataclysms and the evidence for that, and a future cataclysm, which could be linked to an internal combustion explosion that causes the mantles to crack and the poles to shift by uh, these tectonic plates moving and mass tidal waves and and uh, literally tidal waves blanketing entire nations and cities and townships that aren't at a specific level in altitude, just gone. Right here, what you're looking at is a list of these discoveries of volcanoes in Antarctica. And it shows not only the height, but the volume, where it's located, and the confidence factor. And if it was previously identified or not. Now, I want to go scroll down to some of these larger ones. You can see you've got some that are over 6,000 feet here. But here we go, the ones of interest. 97, 98, 99. Were those previously discovered? Well, 99 was. 98, 97 weren't. 98, you can see right there, 8,000 feet or 7,200 feet, and then one that's 11,000 plus feet. These are some big volcanoes. I mean, there's, there's a lot of mass there. And if they're active, that would totally explain why these ice sheets are melting from the inside out. And they're attempting to block the sun to prevent the temperatures from rising, thinking that's going to offset this. Yet in reality, maybe they're creating some type of barrier to block some type of interference with either our sun or another star or planet that even though far away because of its mass and quantum entanglement, etc., could have an effect on the internal part of our planet, which could cause that spark. And then let's think about for a minute how much uranium is mined and was mined in the Earth and is there uranium in the inner core in the mantle? And could something cause that to trigger, which would cause this event? Could neutrinos be involved? I am not a physicist. I don't know enough about neutrinos to give a professional uh, opinion. I can give a conspiracy theorist opinion and intuition and uh, a bird's eye view based upon what I have seen in media that oftentimes mimics science. I think neutrinos could have some type of effect on the core. And another reason I want to give that opinion is because recently I was in Park City and there's more tunnels and underground systems in Park City than New York City based upon the mining that was done out there. And you don't hear much about that. You can't even find much about that on the webs, but there's about a thousand miles of tunnels in and around Park City. And Park City isn't a very big city, folks. So there was a study done with neutrinos in an area that was mined very far, very deep into the earth. And they, they wanted to test neutrinos down there to see what kind of effect it had. And then the film 2012, that started with neutrinos affecting this pole shift. And then the essays that I've read describe that as well. And then also keep in mind, folks, if you believe the orbital system that is shared with the stars and the planets, where we're located right now, we're, we're pretty far away from the sun as far as our orbit is going, is concerned. So why are they blocking the sun from us now if we're, at a far, if we're far away from the sun? Um, so there'd be aphelion, I think. Not perihelion, but aphelion. Not quite the, as far out as we're going to get, but we're, we're further out than, as far as the cycle is concerned, we're further out than just a couple years ago. So why are they spraying more now? or a few years ago, et cetera, in the whole scale, in the whole scheme of things. So is there another star or another planet out there that's coming in that's going to affect our planets? They're trying to create some type of barrier. It's certainly a possibility. Now, on that note, I want to take a pause and give a huge shout out to our sponsor, TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Ladies and gentlemen, check out the specials at TradeGeniusAcademy.com. If you want to make money 
regardless of the market's direction. If you want to become a crypto Jedi or a stock market Jedi, these guys are pros. I trust them more than anybody in regards to trading of cryptos and the stock market. TradeGeniusAcademy.com. Get the discount, 50% off right now. You can even get access to trade calls from some of the best in the industry. Very easy to do. Check them out, Trade Genius Academy. Let them know the League Project sent you. Okay, now let's get back to these dimensions here. I mean, just look at the size of some of these bad boys. And then we're going to scroll down here, and you can see that by using certain imagery, they're able to show these cone-shaped areas and these discoveries of these new volcanoes. And if some of these are active right now, that would certainly explain why these ice sheets are melting. And not only in the South Pole, but also the North Pole, because Greenland's having the same problems as well. Combined with whatever was done to the atmosphere, combined with whatever else is out there, and that makes me think of a podcast I did a while ago. I'll share that with you on another episode. So you can see here some of the, the average sizes. Now this I want to show with you also. This is the discovery. See these little X's down here, the Western Rift System. These are all new volcanoes. 91 new, I shouldn't say they're new volcanoes. They've been there for a long time, but we just found out about them. And there's all this activity going on out there. They're, they're saying, okay, look at this. Can you believe this? And they're just going, wow, what in the world? And, and let's think about all the different pyramids that have been discovered around the world and underneath the ocean. What about the ones close to the coast of Japan? Huge monolithic structures. What about these structures that go back hundreds of thousands of years that resonate specific sound frequencies? Now, also, I want to put into perspective. Hold on, let me show you something here real quick. Let's go back. So, look at this. Here's the West Antarctic Rift. Once again, you can see right there. Wait, just look at it. That's where that line is. West Antarctica. That's where many of these are being discovered. But to put into perspective the size. Of these mountains. Like right here. Those are a little bit bigger. Here. I just had it set up, man. Okay. Anyway, I had it set up. I had some pictures I was going to share with you. These bad boys are a little bit bigger. You know, these are in the 12,000 foot, 14,000 foot range. I was wanting to show you the ones that are about 11,000, 12,000 feet. If you ever go to, um, here we go, 3,000 meters. Yep. Nah, this will work. Close enough. Take away about 1,500 feet on that one. And now I'm just rambling. All right. Anyway, I had it set up, and then I just had to go all gremlin style on me. I'm going to blame it on the gremlins. It's not the gremlin's fault, but anyway. Incredible, right? Watch out, ladies and gentlemen, for the gremlins. Now, the, the Mayans... The Aztecs, their civilization, how powerful and advanced at one point, and what they were doing, and the, these weird headdresses and outfits that they had on. I mean, I'm sure there's a rhyme and reason for it. Now, many of these civilizations are being rediscovered with technologies where they're underneath jungles and vegetation that have completely grown over them to where you wouldn't be able to even see them unless you had these technologies because they're so enveloped in foliage. How long did that take to happen? You know, all, all this stuff that's popping up, you can go to Ukraine, you can go to Bosnia and that pyramid where they're just at least 12,500 years old, these incredible structures that resonate specific frequencies and the pyramids that are just abandoned around the world, even in China. And the older they get, the more advanced they are. And what about the the temples, the observatories, and were they and they were built to harmonize specific sound frequencies. Were they built with sound frequencies? Did there did the people before us have certain technologies that could influence via sound waves, like tur turn something into a state of 
gravity just doesn't matter. It can move it around like a feather. Levitation type stuff. And what type of effect do neutrinos have on the core of our planet? I know I started rambling there for a minute. And also, if sea levels are going to rise by 200 feet, if these ice sheets melt, are they going to slow it down by covering the planet with these stratospheric aerosol injections? Is it going to create some type of force field blocking certain type of neutrinos from entering or certain type of interference from other planetary systems that are coming in? Even though they're, they're not going to hit our planet by any means, but will they cause some type of effect? At least that's my opinion. I don't think our planet's going to get hit by any other planets. Let's see, what else do I got? That's about it for now. There you have it. Thank you for watching. What are we going to see over the next 10 to 20 years in that region? And could this be kind of linked to the singularity possibilities of around 2030? Will there be an event in Antarctica that sparks it? Is that going to be the epitome? Now, places that are supposed to make it through the next cataclysm, described in this Adam and Eve essay, places like Egypt, certain places in Africa, and the high Rockies, talks about elevations over 10,000 feet. I mean, the, the film 2012, I think they got a lot of that information from this essay, in my opinion. Have a beautiful day. Be excellent to each other. Support our sponsors and return support yourself. Sometimes people say, well, Rex, you know, I mean, the world's going to end. And what, why do I care? And what, I don't want to do anything anyway. It's like, well, is the world really going to end? Or is there going to be things that happen in, in, in the future that you can prepare for? And how are you going to prepare for them? Are you just going to talk about it or are you going to do something about it? I mean, are you, going to, are you going to establish as best as you can a plan with supplies and also applications, you know, practice? Like go camping for a weekend and see how you do. Go try it for a night and see how you do. Go try it for a week and see how you do. All talk? Or are you going to practice what you preach? And I think it's good to be prepared. And oftentimes it takes money to be prepared. So I don't think the world's going to end. I think that we could see some pretty serious cataclysms in the future. I mean, the earth changes are incredible right now. I mean, Fiji's coming out saying, hey, our, our way of life, we're in big trouble right now. And look at these huge storms that hit the islands last year. It's just going to get worse. I mean, even Houston, a huge city like Houston, gets hammered. Millions of people. So if you can prepare for things, you can also overcome them. And if you get into a position where you do well for yourself and you establish a foundation where you can kind of keep where you can keep balance and help others, help your family, your future generations, help yourself. It's about helping others. So I think it's good to also work with what you can. I mean, I don't don't just fret on things, don't just worry about things, do something about it. And hopefully the powers that be are doing something about it if it is on the horizon, meaning if there's a, a event horizon that could be catastrophic or serious and the powers that be find out about it, let's hope that they do their best and uh, accomplish it. Because people oftentimes say, oh, you know, the, the powers that be, they don't want us here. We're useless eaters, yada, yada. Yeah, I get it. They probably don't, but there's enough people out there that do and, and care about themselves and their families and their future generations where they're going to do what they can to offset it. So we, we need to keep the faith, prepare for the worst, expect the best, hope for the best, thrive for the best, create the best, be excellent to each other, be the change you want to see.